hope you're well. Today I want to share with you how I am rendering pencil um, illustrations. So I start off with like a gel pen or something like that and then I could even use um, a layer of watercolor or acrylic inks to begin with um, or I can just go in with colored pencils which is what I've done here. Um, so first of all, this is a girl from my FOTD stamp set, which is still available on my Etsy shop, Alona Creates, in case you're interested. So you, create, you can create different fashion faces, um, hence why I called it FOTD, face of the day. And um, yeah, so this is the size. And then if you wanted to ever kind of draw on a body to it, um, this is the size it would look here we go. Um, so basically, if you're curious, these are the eyes I use from this stamp set, the face, and then what else? The lips are here, and you can create, and the eyebrows, I think, which ones? I think I went for these ones. So you can create different uh, facial expressions. There's a hair bun here, which you can use in a number of different ways. I'll try to um, link up a couple of videos up here somewhere for you. Um, or at the end of the video as well, um, where you can check out all of the different looks you can make um, with these stamp sets. But today I want to focus on how to render with pencil. So basically there's um, main three numbers that I use, which is kind of the darkest, medium and lightest. And that's how I create a bit of um, realism in the um, in the illustration so a bit of maybe not realism maybe a bit of depth um, is what I'm trying to say a bit of dimension so you can see I've done it around the face um, the face obviously is what takes the longest because um, the best thing to do is actually find out some good photography of faces maybe go on Pinterest and have a look what um, the face looks like where the shadow falls where there is a bit of a highlight where there is a bit of a hollow um, as Charlotte Tilbury calls it um, follow the hollow so um, yeah you just need to kind of study the structure of the face and then obviously adopt it you can then create your own style within the illustrations and make it quirky so um, you know that all you can change basically these as you can see it's just a shape of a face and just very simple. You can do it as simple as you want. You can do just watercolor faces or you can start rendering with pencils, which uh, which is what I have been enjoying in combination with watercolor still because this part is all watercolors. By the way, I have been sent um, a lovely bit of watercolor to try and I use this on the fur. Let me just show it to you. There you go, you can see this beautiful, it's a rose gold watercolour, handmade watercolour. And I have been sent it to try, let me just pull it out. It's a lovely little note as well. So, let me just get it out for you. It's this rose gold watercolor um it says here ptp so it's really lovely and what i felt um, was quite interesting as well what i did here to create that fur uh fur fur kind of look is basically first i um applied a layer of this watercolor rose gold it's really really pretty it's very intense and then on top of it after it has dried i actually went with a bit of um this color here which is the i believe it's the rembrandt burnt sienna and a bit of quinacridone orange and basically i layered it over the top but it pushed the color uh, the rose gold a little bit and sort of blended in areas and it created the most gorgeous kind of look um so i wanted to share with you in case you are interested because i think i heard about this watercolor quite a few times from different youtubers and it is beautiful so in case you're interested um that's where you find it so yes thank you patty for uh sending it to me i really have enjoyed using it it's been sitting on my desk for quite a while and i've just been 
so busy with everything else that I kept forgetting to try it out. So thank you so much for um, for sending it. Really love the, the watercolor. Beautifully made. Okay, so then coming back to the rendering of the pencil. Basically, the way I do this... Um, I won't go into the face because that's quite detailed. Today I want to show you how I would render the arms, which basically would conclude this part of the body. And it shows you how it sort of creates that nice bit of a dimension there. Okay, so let's look again at these three colors. So I've got, for the darkest terracotta, for the medium I've, I've got here Mars Orange and Light Sienna for the lightest. Now, if I just um, swatch them, next to one another. Let's say I do it here. So this is going from darkest to lightest. These colors are so so beautiful. If you wonder what this pencil is, sorry if I haven't said so, it's the Derwent Drawing Pencil, which I'll show you the box they come in. So this is the um, kind of natural color set and um, I think that's the only the only uh, set available. In fact, there is no more than these 24 colors in this range. Anyway, so here we go. Um, next color we have Mars Orange. So at the minute, I just want to show you what happens when you just kind of swatch them next to each other just to see the colors and what happens when you actually blend them and layer them and the effect that you can get. So next color, I've got the light sienna. So now let's see what happens once we start blending or layering a little bit. So I'm just going to show you what happens. So here I'm going to do terracotta with mass orange. So you can see it becomes the color in between the two because we blended them, we mixed them, and I wonder if you can see that well. Okay, so I zoomed you in a little. I hope that's um, creating enough color there. That's just my brush is creating a bit of a shadow. Okay, so here we go. Now let's see what happens if I go back to terracotta And this time, add Light Sienna. You see we got a different result. And now let's try Mars Orange. And Light Sienna. So basically, that's these two, this one was these two, oh sorry, the, these two, and then this one was these two. And um, if I just write it down, that way you can see what you can achieve. So you're kind of expanding the colors, but also how you blend, how you go from the darkest to lightest um, in a smooth way and create a bit more interest in line. So this is how it starts off, where I just started with a layer of the um, light sienna um, for the arms, but of course it just looks unfinished and I'm just going to show you how I would blend the colors to achieve that sort of finished look. So let's start. What we have here is the darkest color. So I tend to start with the medium color actually. Um, and let me show you. So when you look at an arm, I would want to create a bit of a shade on each side of it, just blending it so that I have a little bit of something going on so it doesn't look flat, so it looks like it's sort of curved. Um, and I'll start with the medium color and I'll start quite sort of gently moving the pencil. Some people move it in circular motion, uh, sometimes, I mean it depends what you're doing. 
and I'm just going to create a line which is about let's say a millimeter wide so I'm not looking for a very wide line here and then I'm going to take it out slightly now in the circular motion with very little pressure so that we have the same color but it's now blending out a bit more into the center of the arm. So that's our first step. Now what I would do, add a little bit more pressure, go back in where we started, right on the line and just carry on adding a bit more pressure. So that's all I have done. The next thing I would do is go to the light color and now with the light color I would layer it on top and sort of blend it out a little. Just like that. So wherever there is a stronger line of the previous color just go a bit more pressure with the lighter color that tends to blend things nicely. And that's it. Now when I've done those two I'm going to go into terracotta and just at the very edge I wonder if you can start seeing what I'm doing here. Let me just try to zoom you in a bit further. So watch what I'm doing here, just creating a little line, just quite thin. And can you see that makes it a bit more sharper? So literally going on the line where I drew it with the pen. And that's it. Then if I wanted to blend it slightly over, I can blend it into the Mars orange, my medium, medium color. By the way, I have made an online course about contemporary color palettes and I explore a formulation that I came up with to help create harmonious color palettes. And I talk about <laughs> that in there, so if you're interested, check it out. Okay, so here we go again. Mars orange, I'll start again on the other side. And keep in mind that you might want to play with uh, strength here. So you might want to add more or less of what you've done on one side compared to the other because you might want to suggest a bit of light hitting this arm. So I might do exactly what I've just done now, just with a more light hand and maybe I would stay away from the darkest color here. I still want there to be a bit more, you know, dimension, not just a flat sort of looking thing. So there we go, that probably would be enough. And now when we compare both arms, hopefully you can see the difference here like that. It makes a big difference but um, it's a simple thing and an easy thing to do. So again I would go now into this area and do the same. So I'll start with my medium color just here about millimeter thick. Not too much pressure at first just running all the way or all the way along and then taking it more into the center of the arm with a very light circular motion like that. So we've done a gradient. Now into light sienna blending the two together that kind of renders it even more, it sort of makes the colors come out better I find and that way we now have this beautiful dimension now into the darkest color terracotta just a very thin line about half of the thickness of the Mars orange is what I'm doing here like that and now back into light sienna and sort of blending over with Mars orange 
you could of course become you know more creative and sort of do somewhere a bit more somewhere thicker line somewhere thinner line and just play with it so here i think i would want to add a bit more darkness um on this side so start exactly the same way now what i'm doing here is exactly the same thing as i did on the face just takes a lot longer and you have to play around there because here I'm just doing line a straight line that I'm blending the face obviously has a different shape and you need to keep that in mind and like I said before study some photography um, some pictures and see how how to highlight how to downlight how to contour um, there's loads of that sort of information on Instagram and, you know, all the, maybe um, try to find like face of the day or look of the day, um, pictures and see what you can kind of take out of it. So there we go. So this arm now actually has more color on this side. So both of the um, sides are kind of the same like render it in the same way so I could repeat that here if I wanted to um, or I could leave it so I could just you know decide what I wanted to do but I think it makes such a big big difference right here so I'm just gonna go in with the darker color here and just on the line and repeat it a bit more here the longer you spend on this, the more layers you apply, the more blending you do, the more detail and the more depth you'll create. Um, I always want to say more realism, but it's of course not realistic. It's a stylized illustration and it couldn't be further away from realism. Uh, but you know what I mean. It sort of makes these illustrations come a little bit more alive. Um, which is the fun bit I find. So I'm just going in back here and I think I like a bit more rendering. And I'm just going to, you can see how different it looks once you add a thin sharp line of the darkest color. and then just blend them there you go and let's try remove a little bit if see if it goes away or not the one that went over the edge doesn't want to move much but I have a sand and rubber eraser let's see if that will help it okay so that does help in a way it moves the pencil but it also smudges it a little it kind of softened it so I'm not sure if that's the look you'd want to go for so these don't erase very well these pencils so keep that in mind okay there you go, so her arms are kind of nicely finished now and like I said, you could go more, less, it's up to you. You could um, do more around, for example, actually collarbones, that's another good one. So collarbones are around this area here, so I'm just going to try just gently first of all draw these sort of lines in the beautiful bit about these drawing pencils is they layer so nicely even when you think probably by this point it'll stop layering it still goes it still continues so 
Uh, let's see. I just add a little bit of the darker color just here. There we go, so that's her collar bones. So I think I'm quite happy with this illustration now. And it looks like there's a lot of light coming onto her chest area. And the arms are sort of a little bit more darker. Um, but it does work because you can see the end of the shoulder matches the color of the arm. So again, you can um, think of it as more stylized uh, way of doing things. I could sit here and try to, you know, do little bits and pieces, but I'm happy with the way she is, so I'll leave it. Um, here I just wanted to tell you, I decided to start with a base, and for the base I used Dallaroni, uh Flash Tint, so this is the Caucasian Flash Tint um, color. Uh, this is acrylic inks, if you're not familiar with FWs, and they are beautiful. So, basically... I started off by diluting it with a bit of water and um, drawing the base color and then on top of it I went ahead with the pencils and started creating and you can see if I just let's see close this side of the face um, it has kind of more color to it this one has the white of the paper come through and again, it's just a different style, whichever you prefer, but you can play around. For darker skin tones, I would go with something, mix up a darker color, uh, perhaps a bit more burnt sienna, and then neutralize it with a, a little bit of uh, paints gray, maybe. Just a little touch, and then on top of that, the pencils. Um, I think that would look really beautiful as well. Um, so that's it for today. Um, done exactly the same thing here around the eye and the cheek so playing with those three colors mainly but I also would add a couple of other colors so for the eye here I went for this beautiful brown ochre and a touch of the yellow ochre as well just to add a bit of that um, color here and uh, for the cheek I added some of the cinnamon which is the pinkier kind of color and um, that was really fun as well so just adding a bit of pink to it but mainly those are the three colors I like to use and again you could um, for instance for darker skin tone you could basically add more of the terracotta and then less of the other colors but still it would be nice for a darker skin tone to add Mars Orange because it's a warm color so it give you that sun glow. Um, what else? Uh, if you wanted like an olive skin color, uh, one of those, uh, adding one of those colors, brown ochre or yellow ochre, just a little bit of it into that mix as well, that also would make it um, um, kind of olivey uh, and beautiful um, skin tone so that's it that's it for today i hope you found it useful uh, let me know in the comment box uh, whether you uh, want anything else um, answered or shown uh, with these uh, face of the day illustrations and i'll see you soon thanks for watching